Madison, New Jersey was literally carved out of a larger Chatham in 1889, when our water company and eventually our electrical company was founded. A third water tower was requested by the then fire chief and planned for, but it was never built, according to current fire chief Louis de Rosa. And Madison has been making structural changes ever since. Once upon a time, there was an elementary school perched upon a hill facing King's Road with an entrance on Green Village Road, hence the name. And what a hill it was. Dedicated in 1949 along with the King's Road School, it was closed down in 1976 after the opening of the Torrey J. Sabatini School. It made an excellent sleigh riding hill. The cops would come and half-heartedly kick us off, necessitating a short break for the sleigh riders who would return moments later. The five-acre, $50 million project was spearheaded by the Kushner Real Estate Group, whose proposal included 100 luxury rentals, and the Mark Built Homes Company, whose proposal included 35 high-end condos. In what was touted as a win-win situation for the Board of Education and the borough, the development will become the borough's second highest taxpayer. According to rosenet.org, Green Village Road Redevelopment. Though it might seem like it, Madison does not all tear down and build. Nature and beauty abound in Madison and in its nearby neighbors. You just have to know where to look.
During the Green Village Road construction, the local YMCA went on a fundraising campaign to build an elaborate $16 million addition consisting of a new regulation pool and an extra gymnasium and workout center. The William Blanchard Company was chosen to do the construction. Summerhill Park, according to the Madison Historical Society, quote, the borough, through the Conservation Commission, now the Environmental Commission, applied and received matching Green Acres funds for a 26-acre park on land between Central and Ridgetail Avenues. Named Summerhill Park in 1987, it is maintained as a passive park.
In addition to the two baseball fields, Memorial Park also has two multi-purpose lighted fields, one of which is flooded in the winter time to create an ice rink when nature permits. Neighboring Florham Park, which has been blessed with much more open space, in fact hundreds of acres more, has made full use of much of this previously undeveloped land. Along Park Avenue is the Summit Medical Building, built by the Rockefeller Group and finished in June of 2015, and its neighbor, the North American headquarters of BASF. Archer Hotel, built by Lodge Works Partners LP and the Rockefeller Group and finished in May 2018. Monroe Dunaway Anderson, who lived from 1873 to 1939, was a Tennessee banker and cotton trader who later moved to Texas and built a foundation. In 1941, the Texas Cancer Center in Houston was built from the funds of that foundation. The cancer centers have been growing and spreading out ever since.
It's springtime in New Jersey. All over the northern part of the state, the pond ice finally recedes. It seems that every plant is bursting out in bloom. Prom parties and graduations abound. On Main Street, there's the typical urban, non-fruit-bearing pear tree, known for its fluffy white blossoms that, after they run their course, flutter to the ground in the wind like snow. They're even more impressive in numbers. This is a wild grove of pear trees behind the Summit Medical Building in neighboring Florham Park. And therein lies the problem with these trees. They're incredibly invasive. In 1916, the U.S. Agricultural Department hired a Dutch-born botanist explorer named Frank Meyer, who was sent to China to find a useful fire blight resistant super pear tree. Fire blight was a disease that threatened the fruit bearing pear trees in the U.S. Meyer sent dozens of Chinese seedlings back to the U.S. to be grafted onto native European pear trees that later turned out to be dangerously invasive. Meyer's base of operation? Wuhan, China. In 1960, these non-fruit bearing Bradley pear trees were released to the general public, and soon it seemed that every town and city in the U.S. had planted these fragile trees. Birds soon consumed the tree berries and spread them far and wide, and this is the result. It was springtime in 2017 when the 20th Annual Police Unity Tour came through Madison. The tour was founded in nearby Florham Park by then Florham Park Police Chief Patrick Montori, now retired, in 1997. They started with 18 local riders who made a four-day ride to Washington, D.C. to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial to bring awareness about police officers who have died in the line of duty. It now has over 2,500 riders from across the country who ride each year and raise money for the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund. So far, they have raised over $30 million. As of this moment, we need to recognize our new police chief, John R. Mishia, a 20-year veteran and lifelong Madisonian, and our new police captain, Joseph M. Longo, a former full-time fireman who joined the force in 2004. Congratulations, gentlemen, and good luck.
It was the Halloween surprise. On November 1st, 2019, just hours after parents collected their trick-or-treaters and blew out their jack-o'-lanterns, an enhanced Fujita 1 twister with up to 100 mile per hour winds touched down in Harding Township along Pleasantville Road at about 12.23 a.m. The next stop was Dixon's Mill Road, where it knocked down a few more trees. The next stop was the entry path to the Lawanica Brook Reservation. It entered Madison proper by touching down in Gibbons Pines Park, which was named after William Gibbons, who owned a 96-acre estate in the 1800s, a part of which became Drew University. And then a few seconds later, it touched down in the forest at current day Drew University, where several trees landed on and damaged parked cars. For some reason, it picked up and passed over downtown Madison, completely sparing the Main Street establishments, landing along Sherwood Avenue, where it tore the front off of a house and uprooted trees that damaged several other houses. The last touchdown in Madison occurred at 12.28 a.m. on Rosedale, before it crossed Route 24 and ventured into Flora Park. Personally, I was awake and in the second story bedroom of my house, which is only a few hundred yards from the Twister's path. I knew something was up after I heard that roaring noise. To me, that traditional freight train noise was diminished by distance. I shined a flashlight out the window. What I saw by the light of that flashlight was a virtual wall of grass and dust and mud flying by my window followed by an open lawn chair. I can only imagine how terrifying it must have been for those directly in its path, but I can imagine it was loud as hell for those people who were under it. <laughs> 